We have one day left in the January transfer window and finally things are beginning to heat up in the transfer market. Welcome back guys to Fog Football and now we begin to see teams make their move. We've got players coming into the league, we've got players leaving the league but in my opinion it's all a little bit too late. I was expecting more activity earlier on in the window. I don't know why these teams are leaving it to the last day, to the last week to try and get these deals over the line just doesn't make any sense to me. We had almost a three week period where there was no football whatsoever. Great opportunity to focus on the signings. Great opportunity to offload whoever you don't want. But no, wait till the football comes back. Wait until there's midweek games, weekend games, and then try and make signings and sell players. It, it just makes no sense to me. There was a three week period where all this could have been done. And you can argue it was a winter break or whatnot, but is that not the perfect opportunity? Is that not what you should be using the winter break for? Since there's no football, there's no games to be played, why not use that time to recruit players? But anyway, most teams didn't do it. However, there has been updates today. We've got Hearts making their first signing of the season. We've got a bunch of activity at Celtic Park. And we might even be seeing serial Dessers leave Rangers after only six months. But we'll start at Hearts because they did get their man. Scott Fraser is finally a Hearts player, at least until the end of the season. He joins Hearts from Charlton Athletic on loan and a deal that's been going on now for quite a long time this one has dragged throughout for the past couple of weeks at the end but it is now official and Scott Fraser will be a Hearts player until the end of the year now Charlton didn't want him to go they sacked their manager Michael Appleton and they wanted Fraser to stay at Charlton however the player insisted that he wanted this move to Tynecastle and therefore it has finally went through now we'll see if there will be some sort of option to buy in the summer I guess it all depends on how well Fraser does if he's successful then why not Hearts should try and make a move from if he's not then just send them back you know and there's no real harm done so yeah Scott Fraser finally becomes a Hearts player speaking of someone else it will be a Hearts player but they're gonna have to wait till the end of the season and that is Yandanda and funnily enough today we had the Ross County manager Derek Adams come out and said the reason Hearts have not bought him up front is because Hearts cannot afford him they don't have the money for Yandanda which I thought was a pretty stranger for Derek Adams I mean the guy likes to have an opinion He's controversial, but you know, sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut and let people wonder whether you're an idiot rather than prove them right. And I feel that's what Derek Adams has done since he's returned to Scottish football. I'm all for people being outspoken, I'm all for people being controversial, but it's almost like every take that Derek Adams has is a bad one. And to say Hearts can't afford Yan Danda, I mean, it makes no sense to me. Let's say it's 600k. Hearts can afford that. I'm not saying 600k is nothing i'm not saying it's you know peanuts to hearts i'm not saying that it wouldn't put a bit of a dent in the transfer budget of course it would but hearts could afford that if they wanted to but let's just look at the bigger picture your hearts are already what 10 points ahead of Kilmarnock. i don't see anybody catching hearts for third place do they really need yandanda this season is yandanda going to hearts going to change anything i mean you can argue he'd be available in the cup but i think he's probably already cup tied so it's it's a no-brainer for me. Do you get him, wait till the end of the season or do you get him now and pay 600k? For me, you wait till the end of the season and you can spend that 600k on somebody else or you can just keep it in the uh, the transfer budget. I, I just don't think it makes any sense for Hearts to go and spend 600k on a guy that they can get towards the end of the season when, let's be honest, Hearts' this season is kind of already over. Can't catch Rangers, won't be caught by Kilmarnock and Jan Danda wouldn't have any effect in the Scottish Cup. So when you break it down like that, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer that they shouldn't be paying 600k up front. But anyway, let's talk about Celtic now. Marco Tellio is leaving the club on loan, and he's actually going back to the club where he earned the record fee for six months ago. So he's rejoining his old club on loan. Uh, it's not been a good spell for Marco Tellio and Celtic, and you could say the same for pretty much all the signings that were made this season apart from maybe Palma who's or maybe in Bernardo as well who's beginning to show signs of a, a decent player but even then I think he's still very untested I don't think we can sit here and say that Bernardo's got a, a great future at Celtic but those two look to be the only two that you can say anything positive really about those two are the only two that have made any sort of impact on the team Every, everyone else has absolutely sucked so yeah Marco Tillio 
leaves Celtic on loan, goes back to his former club, bit of a waste, and I wouldn't be surprised if this guy ends up leaving permanently come the end of the season. And while we are talking about Celtic, let's wrap up some other news then from that side of Glasgow. Looks like Turnbull could be set for a Celtic exit. Cardiff interested in the player at the moment. It's been speculated around £2 million deal. Would that be good? I think so. Celtic don't really use Turnbull. I don't think Brendan Rodgers really fancies the guy. I don't think he's in Brendan Rodgers' favour. If Celtic can get him off the wage budget and get £2 million for him, that's decent. Now, do I think Turnbull's good enough to be at Celtic? Absolutely. Is he starting 11 quality? I mean, maybe not, but I think he could play a good role at Celtic. However, it just doesn't look like Brendan Rodgers really wants him. And I think David Turnbull wants first-team football. So, kind of makes sense if he does leave and, and joins Cardiff. That would be a good move for him, I think, championship football. I think that would be a good move for David Turnbull. Uh, we have Lecky in Serie A, interested in Lager Bielka. They want to sign him on loan. Lager Bielka is just, again, one of many defenders, one of many players Celtic brought in. Uh, at the start of the season that has failed. So I think if he went, it'd be good for him and for Celtic. He's just not really doing anything right now. Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that Sidney Van Hoydonk has joined Norwich on loan. So Celtic's chance of signing Van Hoydonk from Bologna isn't going to happen. We know that is a player that Celtic were really interested in getting in over the line. But uh, yeah, they're going to have to wait at least until the the start of next season and who knows if his spell at Norwich goes well Norwich might look to try and make this a permanent deal so yeah it's, a, it's another player that Celtic could have had but they've let slip through their fingers and uh, finally Serial Dessers could be leaving Rangers yes the man that was deemed not good enough the man that's been mocked for the majority of the season despite actually scoring quite a few goals especially I think in the last couple of months. Now, do I think Dessos is good? Absolutely not. I think this guy is shite. I think he's crap. But Rangers now could be getting money for him. Yes, because there's multiple clubs, including Hellas, Faronis and Torino, interested in signing Serio Dessos. And I think if Rangers could get the money that they paid for him back, they would be daft not to take it. Because we've seen Serio Dessos, okay? He's not a good player. Yes, he's got goals. But anybody up front for Rangers should be scoring goals. And he has, due to injuries and other reasons, been Rangers' main striker this season. I think you would struggle to put someone else leading the line for Rangers and for them to have less goals than Serio Dessel. So yes, he's scored a decent amount, but he's Rangers' main striker at the moment. Of course he is going to score. It makes sense that he is scoring goals. Is this someone that you want Rangers to have long term? Do you want Dessers taking Rangers into the Champions League group stage? Do you want Dessers leading the title fight against Celtic? Based on what we've seen in the first six months at the club, absolutely not. So for me, and I know Rangers don't really have a lot in terms of alternative striking options, but they've still got a day left, okay? Rangers could sell this guy, get their money back, and then, you know, try and bring in a good player. Even if you look domestically, you've got Miofsky and Shankland, both players a hell of a lot better than this guy. And I think if Rangers did get four million for Dessels, they could easily afford to pay a bit more and bring in one of those two, whether they'd be willing to spend that kind of money or not. Anyway, guys, that's it for Fog Football. Obviously, keep you updated today. Lots more transfers, hopefully, going to happen. And, uh, yeah, the transfer window does close shut tonight at half 11 and we'll be here to recap it all so until next time peace